everybody. Welcome to Sunday night at five. Um, I'm actually on the other side of the counter, but we're going to be filming here, but then pop you back over on the other side when I actually show you how we're doing the bow making. Hopefully this will help you guys to be able to make bows. And really the only advice I can give you in learning how to make bows and mastering bows is keep practicing. If you don't like the way that it looks, realize that everything we're doing tonight allows you to disassemble all the ribbon and start all over again. We're not really cutting into the ribbon per se, but you can still take the remnants that you have and just keep redoing it until you get something that you like. So um, Steve's doing our tech support kind of thing, right? Yep. So anyone there? I know, it like Mevo did an update, right? When we decided to go live. So, yep, we got 34 people on. Sandra said hi. Can't see you. Hi, Sandra. Nice weekend. Lynn, we <laughs> Lynn said hi. Peggy, Rachel said hi. Hi. Yeah. We, um, well, except for our 4.30 this morning wake up call from Kaylee telling us that she wasn't feeling very good and probably needed to go to the ER. So, thankfully, Steve went to the ER and um, it turns out that her antibiotic that they were giving her, the Cipro, just wasn't working with the antibiotic that they were giving her with the IV beforehand, right Case? Yeah, so they just changed her antibiotics and now she's a happy camper, got some sleep and hopefully she'll be feeling better and on the road to health. Yep, everybody's saying hi. Why well, said she's there with her mom from her hospital bed. Aww. <laughs> Is it raining there? <laughs> Every picture I think that Vi sent me of her and her mom um, has been in the hospital room where it's been really totally storming. And when I showed Kaylee that video yesterday, she's like, man, I wish it would rain like that here. Yep. So, um, so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using two different methods to make a bow. Um, we're gonna be using the Probo, Probo the hand, and we're gonna be using Bodabra. So with the pro bow, the hand, we've done a bow making video already. So there's already one out there where I showed you the basic, how to do, I think it was like a two ribbon basic bow using the pro bow. Tonight we're gonna do the Terry bow. And that was the one that was actually my most fearful one because I don't know, there's so many different steps in doing it, but I mastered it today. I was able to get a bow that I was okay with, um, even though I kind of messed up my peg placement, but I think I got it figured out. So we're gonna be making a bow for this. So Steve and I, really quick, last minute, we made a bubble wreath with 21 inch deco mesh, and we're gonna add our sign to it. But as you can tell, it needs a bow. So we're gonna be making two different types of bows, and then we'll see which one looks the best. And whichever one we don't use, Obviously, we'll either put on our lantern swag when we do our lantern swag or um, put it on a different wreath. So, any questions you guys have before we begin? Oh, everybody said that they're looking forward to watching you make bows. Um, awesome. Somebody asked uh, the five and a half inches for the candy cane wreath was cut to 10 inches. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So, um, and then we'll be doing lots more candy cane stuff in Christmas. So, Pretty much from here on out, except for like the rare occasion where we make something else, it's all going to be Halloween, fall, and Christmas. Yep. Because now it's time to stock our show. I think what, today's the 24th? Yeah. 24, so yeah. seven more days and we're done with a month, which is just, yep. wow, crazy. Rick Clyburn, I think, is new, said how much do your reads cost? Karen. Karen. It's okay. actually Karen, yeah. Karen. Um, so it just, it varies. I mean, I'm trying to make different price points. So with the bubble wreath, it's a little easier. Um, right around $55, $60 for just a little bubble wreath. And then if you go bigger and more elaborate, just depends on what all you add. I mean, they can go all the way up to 95, sometimes beyond that. Although I've never done a beyond that yet. It'd be awesome. I think we're going to try for one. So we'll see how it turns out. Yep. A couple of people asked oh, yeah. where you got that mesh at, but that's from your uh, yeah. private stash. This is the private stash. So this is actually just a chocolate and an orange with a metallic foil in it. I'll look if I can find out where I can find something similar. I'll kind of post it. <clears throat> um, but it kind of came in the stash because Steve and I went out to the garage last minute because I made one that was supposed to be my demo. Yeah. But he had cut everything off thinking I was done with it. And I was like, 
that was my demo one. one. It's an orange and brown 21 inch mesh with yeah, uh, this is all 21 inch it's mesh. It's like a streak of copper. Not really. Right? It's just orange. Orange. Yeah, it's just orange, orange all the foil. way through. Yeah. yeah. And then the sign looked really good with it. Although we were trying to figure out sign placement. Like we like this one too. Kaylee wants me to do this one, but she wants more dark. I guess right. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna try this one because we do we have two of these signs. This sign did come from Hobby Lobby. This one came from I think Jane's Front Door Decor. Yeah. Because yeah. okay. normally if Lee does it, she puts a little sticker on the back. So this is yep. from Jane's. Okay. So we're gonna jump in. I'm gonna come on that side so you guys can be over my shoulder, yep. which is exactly the way my private group gets all their do-it-yourself tutorials. So I just figured it was easier because when I was watching videos, I found it easier watching the person if I was looking at it the same way you guys will, rather than trying to figure it out facing what it is and then trying to figure out, okay, I have to do this from the other side of the table. <laughs> so that's why we're gonna mix it up and go over there. So I'm gonna go over there. Yep, just got the little clips that you're talking about or the one inch cable tie adhesive mounts. Um, Tanya answered a little below. You can get them at Home Depot. They come in like a pack of 100. So Don't use them on metal signs though. They, they will they'll they, pop off. They do pop off after a while so use a um, hole punch for your metal signs. Okay so I'm going to take this and I'm going to move this to the side so we have workspace. And I'm going to go ahead and adjust. Okay so what do you guys want to see me do first? Do you want to see Provo? Provo, sorry, I, the words are so like close. Provo or Bodabra? I'll let you guys be the, dis, the deciding. We're going to do one bow of each. And as you guys can see, this will take a little bit longer. This doesn't take as long for me. But that's what I learned on. This is what I'm continuing to learn on. And as you guys will figure out with the Pro Bow, there's multiple different types of bows you can make with it. So I'll let Steve kind of figure it out. Everybody's saying Probo right now. Probo? Okay. <laughs> well, and then Linda said Bodabra and Brenda said Bodabra, but I mean, will we use both? You just yeah. want to do the Probo first? We'll do this one first because this is the hardest and then that's great because then I get the hard stuff out of the way and then I have like easy stuff, which is like when I did my Terry Bow on, let me show you what I did. This is the Terry Bow that I made for this race. So this is a terry bow. This is what we're going to be making. So we're going to be making this size bow. And as you can tell, it fits perfect on the 14 inch wreath frame doing the bubble technique. So it's about 22 inches in diameter. I don't even know what the bow is. I'm guessing like 10, 10 8 to 10 inches what? in diameter. I'm guessing. So we're going to make this. You need six different color ribbons. You don't have to. But it looks nice if you can get a wide variety of colors. So I think those are the colors I think we kind of play with that look the best with our with our wreath and our sign. So we're gonna do the Provo first and then we'll do the Bodabra after that. Yep. So what you will need is it doesn't matter what width um, ribbons you have. So you can go one and a half, two and a half, you could do four. And you can put them, you can stack them in any different order that you like. Um, I just kind of put them together so I know which ones I wanted, like I was playing with the colors. So these are the colors I'm actually going to do for the bow that's going to go on the, the darker pumpkin sign. And it's because I need to pull a little bit of black into it because the sign's all black. And we kind of need that little pop. Sign. Go ahead and move this over. Yeah. So this is the sign. So we kind of need those colors. So I have one, two, three, four, five, twelve. I have like sixteen different rolls of ribbon over there that I chose not to use. And all I was doing is as I was playing with the sign and the color choice, I was like, ooh, that's pretty. And then I was like, this actually matched the deco mesh more because it has more of the chocolate browns in it. So we're going to use that one. We're going to add our black and white because it looks cool when you add black. And then we're doing 
this color, which kind of has all of those, the beige, the red, the green, a little bit of a blackish brown. Are you readjusting everything so it fits? Yeah, just so they can see everything. I've got it zoomed in. But you're readjusting my order. Okay, these are the order. Ooh. I'm like, I'm trying to keep them in the order I wanted them. And then we're gonna put this one in. And then we're gonna add just a plain canvas orange to break up all that pattern. And then I really like this. It's like a floor de lay. It's golden chocolate. So it looks really good with the sign and it looks really good with the deco mesh. So to set up your Provo, so there's all my ribbon choices. To set up your Provo, you're going to actually start with one peg in the middle. So this is where you're going to basically be working your bow and they call all these little pegs fingers. So depending upon the size of your loops, so going from here to here, that's gonna be the maximum size of your bottom loop. This will be the minimum size of your middle loop. So you can kind of measure them out and figure this out. This is why for me, the Pro Bow is more of a challenge because I can't really vary the lengths of my ribbons unless I just kind of rewrap them around the same pegs. So, but I'll show you how it works. So we'll need this. Um, I think people, you're on row C, right? Row C. Row C, yeah. And I don't use the middle one because the video I watched, they weren't using the middle one. I've been using the middle ones in the, in the past and it makes for a really small center, which can get really tight to try to pull apart. You will need wire. I have 24 gauge wire, and with watching some of the videos, they say that the tinsel strength has changed since wire gauges were originally created, and now the 24 uh, gauge wire would have been what a 26, age, 26 gauge wire would have been before. So what you wanna do is you're gonna need two pieces of your floral wire. I'm doing green because it's easier to see for you guys. So I'm going to measure it, the length of my Provo, and then I am just going to run it all the way down again. So I have two of the exact same width, and then I'm going to cut this. So this way I have two pieces, exactly the length of the Provo. And then I'm going to cut this one in half. So we have two pieces. I'm going to move my sign because I don't need that anymore. And then I'm going to take the wire and I'm going to put a slight bend in it so it's kind of a U shape. It's just easier when you get when you're ready to pick it up and start working with it that it's already kind of somewhat folded. And then I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I think it's the same with this one. Okay, so I am going to start with the ribbon that I want to be on the very, very top of my bow, which is going to be this one. So I'm going to crack this open. And this way, this ribbon came from Hobby Lobby last year. I believe it's making another appearance this year. So if you really like this. I think you guys can really get a good view of it now, so it should be good. Yeah. And then I'm going to do my dovetail, which is put my uh, wired edges together and cut from the folded side to the point. So that gives us our dovetail edge. And when you start with your um, bow, you want to make sure that your right side of your fabric is facing away from you. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to determine how big do we want our tail on the very top of our bowl. So I'm gonna start this one probably like right in between B and A. And again, it's facing away from me. So here's the really pretty side, facing away. And I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna gather it. Pinch, 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 pinch. Just like this. So here's my pinch. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, I should have done this one too, and folded that. I'm going to wrap it around this bow and it, this is where it kind of it gets a little 
cumbersome, but this is where you're gonna get a really good start on your bow. So this is where it all begins. So I try to just stack it as nicely as I can. So I have what looks like, here's the wrong side facing me. I have my two wires and I've twisted it around my bow, just like this. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take it and put it about halfway up the little stick. And I'm gonna take one wire and I'm actually going to loop it around the top just like so. And I'm gonna take the bottom one and there's a little nail on the bottom of your probo. So if I move my hand, there's a nail right here. So you're gonna wrap it around your nail a couple times. And then it's easier for you not to get confused with this wire if you just tuck it underneath the probo. So you're not gonna need those wires anymore until the very, very end. So now what you're gonna do is we wanna start with our fabric on the outside. Hey everybody, thanks for joining in and thanks for sharing. I'm just gonna make this a little bit tighter so it doesn't slide around on the pole. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna go around one of our loops. And, and then what? Which, which number is that? Uh, one R. We don't do the center, so it's just gonna mm -hmm. be one right. One right on column C. Yes. So you're gonna take that, and you're gonna go to where you have it in the center, and you're going to gather, 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 just like so. This is where the second wire comes in handy. So you're gonna take the wire, and you're gonna run it underneath the bow, so that it's right here on the other side, just like this, and we're gonna put a little twist in it. So it's between the bow and the peg. Yep, between. We're Tor just like towards you. Yeah. yeah. So and I leave one up, and I leave one down, and what we're gonna be doing is working with the material inside this bow. But what this does is it's gonna hold that first loop, and then what they always tell you to do is go bottoms up, so that just like when we do the pro bow. So when we go to wrap this around, the, the, I guess they call it a finger, <clears throat> the right side fabric is where it needs to be. And now you're on one L, looping around one L. Yep, we're just going. We're gonna keep going each consecutive time. And then we get to the middle of our peg and we're going to pinch, 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 pinch. Take our wire again, the upper and lower. And we're going to give it a couple twists, just like that. Bottom up, and then we know that we were cutting it, I'm trying to think, between B and A. So that's where this bow ends. So we cut that off, do our quick dovetail. Yes, Wendy, row C, no middle peg. Row C, no middle peg. This is for the Terry bow. Right. So that takes care of using this material. So you can just take it and put it to the side so you didn't get confused. No problem, Jane. She said, sorry, we're getting ready for surgery this week and have company. We'll catch you play. Okay. Good luck. We'll, we'll pray. We'll pray. So now we're putting this one off. This came from Craft Outlet. So it's a one and a half inch, just plain orange canvas. And we're gonna cut the folded side off, do our dovetail. So the process just goes exactly the same with each ribbon you add. Again, we're going folded side to the point. Put these away. And we're going to measure. So we knew this one was between B and A, so let's make this one go all the way to B. Same thing, right side fabric is gonna face the little peg in the center, and you're going to fold, fold, gather, fold. Gather. Yeah, I like pinch, pinch, pinch. Put it in the center, just like so. Take those funky wires that are up and down, and you're just going to take them 
and twist. And this looks like it's kind of where the tough part is, trying to get the wire in while you're holding the, yeah. the tail. Yeah, because you're trying it. really hard as you're trying to tie it tight. Sometimes your ribbon will like flip and kind of pinch. So it's just going to take a lot of practice. So this is my second one. So again, fabric is the right side fabric is facing and you'll see people take their little tails and stick them there. It's just so they don't get in the way. So we're going to take this and put this on two. So this is the second peg on the right. On two R. Two R. And when we get to the center, we want to do the gather, gather, gather. So it's right there. And then you want to turn it? Yeah. Good. We'll have to flip it up, trying to make sure there's enough fabric here. So here's our right side is here. And we're just going to go around 2L, or the little second one. Come back to the center. Thank you, Carolyn. She said, great job on teaching this. <laughs> I'm hoping Brenda, you guys can kind of see. Brenda said, if you want a fuller bow, you can pull two ribbons at a time. Yep, but she's just teaching the single, single one right now. <laughs> yeah. Don't want to do the whole do two at a time. That just like throw people way out. So now that we've completed our two bows, we're going to kind of take those two wires are up and down. And we just put a little twist in it. We take it out here, and as you can see, it holds everything together. And we're going to cut this one right to the B. Brenda did a great job on her first video, so you could do also another teaching lesson on a Pro Bowl if you're really fluent at it. Yeah, anybody. Like I said, people like different styles. You know, they'll learn from different people. Hi, everybody. Hi, Charlotte. Hi, Yvonne. So we dovetail cut these, so we're moving our ribbons out of the way. We don't even need to worry about these for a while. Yep. So these are all just kind of stacking up out of the way. So now we're going to go with Fatty Boy, the <laughs> two and a half inch one. Fatty Boy, huh? Fatty Boy, yeah. You don't have to if you want to stay one and a half, one and one and a half, one and a half all the way. You can do that. It's totally up to you. Um, I watched the YouTube video to figure out how to do this, and they were alternating two and a half, four, one and a half, and I was like, okay, well, let's just. Surely, yeah, she did. wired, she wired two R. Yes, two R, one R, one L, two L, and yeah. then these are where my bows are. Yep. That's where they are. I made that mistake the first time. Hi, everybody. Where Doris said this was the first boy I mastered. That's awesome, Doris. This it's one's a lot tougher than the Bodabra. It is. It just, it's time consuming. So if I was to throw this in with making a wreath, the videos would go like two and a half hours long. So we always dovetail cut. So obviously this is our right side fabric. We know that the orange we cut to the bee. So let's make this one go to like between the B and the C. So I'm just going to do the same thing. Bring it to the center. It's right where that orange line is. So I'm just going to do my little gathers. Just like so. I'm going to stick it right in the middle. Just like this. I'm going to take my Probably just have to keep trying. She said I get so frustrated I just can't do it. You know what? Yeah, like Steve says, see like right now it wants to kind of pull my ribbon from the other side because it's fatter so i think it's just trying to get that gathered fabric in there so all you need to do is get that first little twist on there yeah it's tough wendy i try to get the best angle i could it, it still blocks it a little bit but yeah What's she that? tied it what the two r oh yeah yeah so now i'm going to three r flipping it over Bringing this around. Remember, this is a little bit bigger. So right when we get to our center section, we're just going to kind of gather it up. Just like this. And I'm going to hold it. Yep, Valerie, that's exactly right. Carla, you can just walk, replay this over and you can stop it whenever you <laughs> that's want That's what to. I did. I yep. totally did. I was like, okay, wait. How did she do that? Stop. How did she yep. do that? Stop. So I twisted it, so now my right side fabric again is facing this. The only reason they have you flip it up is so when you go around the loop, it's so your right side fabric will be on the outside of your loop. In this case, it's your 3L. Yep. So, and you don't have to, like, I made the mistake, I think, one time, and I was, like, pulling really, really tight on my bows. You don't need to. Yep. You don't have to put a ton of tension on it. So, again, when we get back to the center section. Yeah, you can really push push it in. And, and Not just, yet. 
I mean, to push it towards the page. Not yet. So we just gather, gather, gather. And where did my uppy down wire go? Let's see, where did it hide? Oh, it's in here. That's where it, it helps. You need your up down wire. I call them the up down wire, so ones that are just there all the time. Yep. So you're going to put your little tie on that one, just like so. That'll hold up the mess. And then we're going right to, I think we said, what did we say? I'm pulling you back to out. the C, right to the edge of the C. Almost. Yeah. Okay. So I'll tuck that back under there. Charlotte, this is the Probo. And there's, there's a lot of people on here who have actually mastered the Probo. Uh, Kat's teaching it just so you guys can use it as a replay and for a guide. And mm -hmm. you guys can just watch the video and learn off of it and copy it. Yep, this is the Terry bow. Like we did the basic bow that they did where they just show you how to take, you basically take all your ribbon, you pile it all together so it's all stacked and then you just go around each peg with just the one wire and then um, you just kind of pull them all apart. So we did that one already, so I was like, okay, let's do the next one. And you don't have to go narrow first and then go to wider. You can go no, I didn't. narrow, wide, narrow, wide, narrow, wide. That's exactly what I did. But it depends. If that's what you want to do, you can do it. Yeah, you can. I mean, I think it's weird because when you pull them apart and you actually put them on something, you would think that it has to be smaller and then graduating to the bottom, but it doesn't because when you pull them, you can have some yeah. wide and then narrow and then wide. Um, surely every wrap you would so once you do one R and then come around the peg, yes, you wire, you gather it and then you wrap you the wire. Not yet. You you twist the wire at the, at the uh -huh. you twist that. You do it when I add my tail. So like when I add my tail, I'll twist, go around, hold it, fold it. Twist it. No, and then flip it, but I don't wire it. Like watch, I'll show you how we're doing this one. No, but once you do once you get to the end for the tail, that's when you wire it. At the end. Yeah, you do it at the beginning with the tail and at the end with the tail. And one time I felt like a little uncomfortable, so if you feel like wiring it again in the middle just to give you some extra leverage, there's no right and wrong way of doing it. So, oh, that's really cool. Jean says she saw it done with raffia in the bow. Yeah, and people have done it with flex tubing. I saw that last night. Yeah. So this time we're going a little ways past the sea with our black. So again, fabric away from us, right? Mm -hmm. We're in the middle. So this is where we're gonna do our little gather, 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 like little pinch. So we have our little bow tie, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And we're stacking it in the same location. Here's the up and down. So you're wiring at the start. Yep, you're wiring at the start. So I just put like a good twist in it. So I have up and down, move that to the side. And now I'm going to 3R, right? No, 4R. So I'm going around four, just like so. I'm back to the middle. So right where I'm going to gather, gather, gather. You've got your pinch. You hold it. Oops, I want my ribbon on the floor. You flip it upside down. So they call it bottom set. So you have your wrong, wrong side fabric facing up so it can go around your peg and then come back. So if you're thinking about it this way, each of these loops is the way the bow's gonna be seen from the outside. Thanks. And then once we get back to the point, we're back to the middle. We gather, gather, gather again. And then we up and down wire and we wire it. I like thicker wire because I have hand challenges with thinner wire. So using a little thicker wire just helps. You don't see it anyway. So now we're cutting this off. We'll dovetail and look, we are more than halfway through this bow. So the process is the same all the way through. And like Brenda says, if you wanted more bows, you would just put like this and another bow together and do two together so that when you go you will pull them apart so i'll take this one and then we're doing our chocolate it'll be interesting this is glitter city 
The size of the wire is either a 24 or a 26 gauge. This one is 24. 24. Yeah. Because we were told that the wire tinsel strikes have changed and to get 24 instead of 26. So again, I'm cutting each of these off. This came from Michael's last year. Last year during fall. I'll pan it a little bit closer in one second. Yeah. So I'm dovetail cutting these again. Wired edges together, cut from the fold to the point. There we have our perfect. Ooh. Yeah, she could place the ribbon on the regular holder, but she kind of likes just having. I don't it. like it. She likes having it loose. I really don't that's, like this. That's her own opinion. Look, see, it just it drives me crazy. I don't know. It's just me. It's a preference. That's like, why do I twist the bow, Dabra? Every time I make a bow, I don't know, it just feels good to do it that way. So I'm doing this one all the way to D. So right here at my center, I'm going to gather and fold. Again, right side fabric is away from me. So it's going to go right here with my up and down wire. So I'm going to wire this on. Yeah, man, and right, the colors of the ribbon are really pretty. So we're just wiring that. So that one went pretty good. Melody said, I'm only using four different color combination of ribbon. Should I add two more different colors combinations or I can't, or can I stop now where I'm at? You can stop now where you're at. When I was watching the YouTube video, it was actually uh, by the lady whose name is Terry, who the Terry bow was named after. And I just liked her instructional style. So I was doing like what Steve says, every step, I would stop, or if I was like, wait, 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 what did she do? Did she wire each time? And mm -hmm. then I just rewind it and then just rewatch it again. Or as Mana said, you just pick two of the same colors and use them again. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this one's actually going to go out to 5R. So we're almost to our last peg. So it's going to go around that one. See, for me, it just kind of gets all twisted. Maribel asks, are the tails cut to the same size? Uh, no, I'm graduating them a little bit longer, a little bit longer each, each time because it's going to be towards the bottom. So here I am at the middle. So I'm going to hold it. I'm going to twist it. So this is why I don't like my ribbon on the, the holder. So this is our wrong side facing me, right side's facing out. So it can actually, moving those tails, go around our fifth peg, where they call it the finger. Let's call them pegs. <laughs> Get them back to the middle. Gather, 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 gather. I zoomed in a little bit more so you guys should be able to see it better. And then I have my up-down wire. <laughs> Yvonne said, love your ring. <laughs> Thank you. And then you just twist it. And then we know this one's going to go all the way out to D. So then I'm just going to cut this one to D. So it's just a little bit longer than the others. I just found that if you cut a little bit longer, you can always cut shorter. But if you cut it too short, you can't attach your ribbon. So there's that one. Hi, Mary Jane. She said, hello, my first time here shared. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hopefully this will help. So uh, that Shelly one's asked, what is the largest size, rib size ribbon you can use? Uh, I've heard four. Um, you might have to use the taller pegs. Yeah, they have so taller pegs. So you would pegs. just go taller pegs if you're going to put a taller wire than what would be on here. But right. yeah, you can keep going. I mean, there's people who will take raffia and add raffia in here with it. So you would just do it the same way. Take your little string, wrap it around, twist it in. And so now we're on our last bow, our last ribbon. So we're just going to take this one. There you go. Let's make all the... I don't know why it's there. I just don't use it. So dovetail cut, so wired edges together, cut from the fold to the point. Meryl Bell, um, when she's on the Pro Bow, the first tail that she cut was cut to B, and then, the, and then as she was going, she was cutting them a little bit longer, and the last one is gonna be probably at, what, D? It's in between D and E. It's in between D and E, so that'll be the last one. Yeah, so again, so you can use those measurements, and I think the measurements are one inch in between sizes. So yeah, 
maybe. You can like make it about one inch longer. An inch in between. Yeah. It's up to you. I just liked it. When I did the other one, that's how it came out. So. Uh, Janine, that last ribbon that she used is that brown striped. I think she got it at Michael's. Uh, yeah. Michael's. Michael's. Yeah, and then this That was one, last year's ribbon. Yeah. This one is Hobby Lobby, and it's back at Hobby Lobby in their yeah. seasonal section. So we did our up down. There you go. And Brenda said she's going to go live in the morning, 10 a.m. She's going to make a terry bow and wrap it in a candy cane. Awesome. So see, I just don't like it because I'm, I'm so about not having ribbon, like flipping and folding. <laughs> so the, the thing that I find that you have to do is with your, up, I call it my up, my up down because <laughs> there's an up and down and then the other ones are wired to the actual Probo. So you just want to make sure that they're out of the way because you mm -hmm. guys saw me when it got lost in the bigger one. I had to go find it. So we're back at the middle. So we're going to scrunch, 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 scrunch. We're going to hold it. We're going to take it. We're going to flip it so that we can get that nice loop on the outside. So I'm just going to do that over there. And this is where I'm going to do my little last gathering. The last of the gathering. The gathering. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're up, down. And you're just going to twist it. Just like so. So it looks way cool. So I'm going to take this. We know it goes out to, I think it goes between B and E. Put this one here. And I don't have a fluff box. So before those of you ask me, you know you can get a fluff box? Yes, I know that. <laughs> Most of the time, if I'm making a ribbon, it's going to go right on the wreath. So there's my fluff box. So I generally don't just make these. But here's a fun thing. If you guys are going to do um, craft fairs and stuff uh, during fall slash Christmas, Take a bunch of ribbon and your pro bow or your bow dabra. Make a bunch of bows and just sell bows. I mean, people would love these all year round. So to finish this off, I'm just going to put a couple extra twists on here. Oops, I was twisting it off. A couple extra twists. And then what they ask you to do is you want to take this mess that you've kind of stuck piled up here. And this is where you want to push them together and this is where you untwist your wire on the top and untwist your wire on the bottom I'm going around my nail and then this is where you're going to take those and you're going to twist and tighten them all together one final time and this is where you have to have thick enough wire because if you were to really wrench this on here it could break yeah it yeah. would snap and then you're like great now i have to do it all over again so here's my up and down wires and <laughs> there we go there's my mess and then this is where you can take it all off your you can remove your little fingers so that makes it easier the pegs yeah yeah my pegs they're not fingers that would be gross <laughs> so once you get about halfway off the rest of them are there so that's what it should look like when you finish just a nice little stacked bow so those are all our colors those are all the things we've used that gets you to put away and then let me go grab the wreath so this is what it's going to sit on so here's my fluff box so I'm going to take my wire, and I already know it's going to kind of fit up here. So I'm just going to wire this in to my frame. So I'm just going to run my wire through. Yeah, we actually put an eye hook on the on the probo <laughs> yeah. in the back, and she used that for a fluff box too. It didn't really work as well as I liked. So I was telling Steve, I'm like, uh, I think we're going to have to work on that to make it to where it's something that will function the way that I want it to function. So there it is. It's on. So now what they tell you to do is you start at the bottom and you're supposed to take your tails 
and your loops and you make them go in opposite directions. So if you have a loop going this way, your tail has to go the opposite. Same thing if you have a tail here, we're going to pull, eh, here it is. Shelly asks, what is the most you twist, I guess, on the wire when you're twisting it all? What do you mean twist? When you're doing the final one? I just, I just Four or five do, times? No, twice. Oh, and then at the very end, I put a couple extra twists on it. Yeah, so about four or five times. Yeah. So I have, here's my loops, here's my tails. Then I'm going to go down to the next one, which is my canvas. Good job, Shelly. So, she said she made her own fluff box. See? That's good. So now I'm going to make my tails go in the opposite ways so that you have bows and tails in between. So there's my, what is it, the sparkly one? That mesh is a stripe. It is a thick orange and brown 21 inch stripe. No, yeah. the mesh. Oh, the mesh. yeah. Yeah. So they go completely opposite. So you're just kind of toggling back and forth and back and forth. So now we're doing our black. So I want my tail over here and my loop over here. Mary Jean, yeah, we, we put a eye hook on the Probo, so that's, that's what she used for a fuck box. But on this one, she's just using the actual wreath. The wreath. It's yeah. just easier for me to do it this way because I would fluff it on the fluff box, take it off the fluff box, stick it on my wreath, flip my wreath over, tie my yeah. thing on, and then I have to refluff it all. Helen, yeah. everybody can tell you here a fluff box is just like a heavy piece of like cutting board or wood that you put an eye hook on and a nail on. So you once you finish the the pro bow, you tie it around the eye hook, right? And then you fluff all the bows out. Yep. So now I'm just sitting here pulling my loops. So remember the tails go opposite the way the loops go. So it's like you have a loop and then a tail and then a loop and then a tail. And then you'll just kind of play with it and pick and choose what you want to see in which direction. So now I'm dealing with my thicker plaid. Yeah. Now I'm dealing with the canvas. So I'm going to pull these to the side. Cheryl, yeah, it's tough. She said she has a problem getting the center tightened enough that the ribbon stay put. She needs That's more, why I think if you go, spray. yeah, go with a thicker wire. Go with just a thicker, like I did 24 gauge. So that it was it was thick enough for me to like really be able to grab onto it and pull it tighter. So again, opposite directions. That's awesome, Kathy. She said her husband made her a fluff box out of a wooden TV tray. <laughs> that is so cool. Shelly, this is the Probo Large, right? It's Probo the hand. Yeah, you have large. the box over there. So again, wherever there's a loop, I put a bow or a tail. So I want to pull this one to the other side. And then make sure we're fluffing. Always fluffing. Always fluffing. Pull this guy down. Man, I said the black looks great. So pretty. I think you had to have it because, like I said, with the sign, it's just like it was. <laughs> what are you going to do to bring the black yeah. in? So even one of the other wreaths we did, we're like, we really need to bring black in. Not an overwhelming amount of black, but yeah. just a little bit. Carol said, your color choices of ribbons look great with the deco mesh on the wreath. Yeah. See, so there is our pretty bow. So you're just going to always want to make sure that you come in and that you put your fingers in between your bow so that there shouldn't be any creases in your bow and that your bows are actually popping up. And then your tails, just run your fingers through your tails. And if you want your tails cut shorter, cut them shorter. Karen, yep, that is the bubble method. Yep. This 21 is, inch bubble. This is the bubble. So this is where I'm gonna kind of keep this. And then look, if we add this on, it's loud. So let me just go ahead and add this in here. Just gonna go in. I like them a little bit lower. I'm just feeding these down so we can see what the sign looks like with the bow. Neva, yes, the Provo actually comes in a small size. 
Um, and so does the Bodabra, four actually for hair bows. Mm -hmm. So now, but I think you could do like row A too to get a really, really small bow. Yeah. Shelly, we'll put this video, um, we'll post this once we're done right onto her Facebook and we'll post it to YouTube later. Yeah, it takes me, it takes a while to upload it to YouTube. YouTube isn't as fast when you're, you have to go and save it and then you have to wait for it to upload to YouTube. So it's, it yep. takes a little bit. Uh, I'm assuming that's Deborah says, John Deborah Blaylock. Hello, came in just now, what method of mesh? That's a bubble. This is a bubble it's a 21, 21 inch, inch bubble. bubble. Yeah, we did that. When did we do the bubble? Last. Oh no, I did it in my private group. Yeah. I did it. But there are videos on YouTube that show you how to do it. Yep. So let me show you what that looks like when you're actually looking at it. Let me zoom it out. You can bring it a little bit closer. There you go. Yeah, perfect. So that would be the bow for our wreath. <clears throat> and then you guys have seen me do this on the bubble before because the way the, book, the bubble wreath is, is you're stacking layers. So they look like loaves of, or slices of bread going all the way around your decomash. And there really isn't a way for you to come in and add ribbon in here, like you guys have used to see me do. Mm -hmm. So these are what they call vase, what it, vase and bowl fillers or scatterers and something else. So I just take them. Scatters and fillers. Scatters and fillers. Now Hobby Lobby calls them vase fillers and bowl fillers. Yeah. So you can just sit here and just take them and stick them on all your little pipe cleaners. Sandra, when she packs this, she'll actually pack this in a 24, mm -hmm. 24 by four, yep. and everything will scrunch down, and she puts a letter in the top of it that actually says, please take the time to refluff your bow, as they're probably flattened in, in shipping. Yep, or even when customers are gonna put this away for the season, they're gonna put it in a box, they'll probably put it in the exact same box that it, it shipped in, so that's why we use wired ribbons. So all you have to do is come back in from the season and flip all your bows, yeah. pull all your, you know, your tags and your ties down. But this is what we would do. And we just keep going all the way around. So it would add a little bit more to this than just the sign, the bow, but it would just pull these colors mm -hmm. from inside here. So. That's what that bow looks like on here. Yep. So any questions you guys have? No, nobody asked, can you make the tails all be in one direction and the bow's fluffy on top? Mm. It'd be hard to, you could pull them apart, but. It's really hard because I'm like thinking, you're just gonna have these big, huge gaps where all your bows are gonna stack up. What I have been told is that they want you to kind of, if you have, your tail, like your loop here, they want your tail here. If you have a loop here, then your tail should be over here. So your tails should be opposite of each of your loops. So they shouldn't be stacking. I mean, you can adjust them, you know, to whatever preference makes you happy, I guess. Helen asked, how much 21 inch mesh does it take to make the 14 inch wreath for a bubble? One roll, just one roll. If you do 10 inch, measurements and you're accurate on your ten you have to be like right on the money with because otherwise what ends up happening is your bubble does not stay perfect you might have ups and downs ins and outs with your you know how you're stacking your loaves of bread i guess yep. i call it slices of bread and cynthia was right she said did you put five bubbles in each section uh yes and then i jumped if you look there's five in each section, so I have brown, orange, brown, orange, brown, and then I jump from this one to the next section, and that makes it one, two, three, four, five. You start in one, and then you'll jump into the other. Yep. And then this is your start and finish. Yep, five bubbles in each section, and then your sixth one, you're actually jumping over to be the first one. Yeah, the they section. are like really nice. They're very, very full. They're very, very thick. Yep. And like I said, these signs look amazing on it. Um, even when we took the sign that Kaylee wants, she wants us to make one that's more dark. You could still get away with that. Mm -hmm. They go more dark. I'd probably change the colors of the ribbons and go 
not white and or black with white polka dots. I'd probably go something more black velvet striped or something like that. So what do you uh, guys think of that? Shelly asked, what are those beads? <laughs> They're called scatterers and fillers. You get them at Hobby Lobby. Do you have your other bag? Or... Yeah. No, they're all open now. No, the, the new ones we just got. We didn't buy new ones. We took pictures of the new ones. Oh, okay. So you buy them at Hobby Lobby. This is like a fall mix, so it came with browns, oranges, and greens. You can get them at the Dollar Tree. Um, Hobby Lobby has them right now, just like a whole bag of red, a whole bag of gold, a whole bag of silver. So I have been posting pictures. So just keep <laughs> checking your Hobby Lobby. So that's it for the Terry Bow. So and that's the Terry Bow. Bow. Yeah. Terry Bow on the Pro Bow. Hi, so. Leslie. No problem. She said she just came in late, wanted to say hi and how wonderful this is. Awesome. Um, somebody asked how many videos you do for the private group. Well, in July, it's going to go to eight. eight and eight for business, yeah, for business, which is not so much just business, but it might be like, how do we handle customer complaints when we send out a wreath and the inevitable happens? We'll talk about, do we stand behind our policy or do we, are we all about customer service? Um, how are we going to set ourselves apart? Well, branding and marketing and all kinds of fun stuff like that. And then we're going to up it from, we were doing two business classes and two um, tutorials. Now we're going to do, the tutorials will be all on Sunday nights. And then the business classes will all be on Wednesday. So hopefully that will work with our group a little bit more. So, and then, yep. um, so there will be eight. Right now there's only four. In the public group, you're going to cut down to one a week. Yeah, well, <clears throat> we're gonna we're gonna look at the schedule and see because we're trying to find a different day because it just seems like Sunday is so competitive with everybody else doing wreath making tutorials that we're trying to find a different day that we think might be more beneficial. So we might do like a afternoon class and just throw some stuff in here. But the private group gets all like the cool fun stuff like table arrangements, garlands, yeah. corner swags, lantern swags. They got the Christmas tree. What else do we do? The sunflower. And all those videos are all stockpiled for you guys in the library. So you can have them as long as you're a current group. Trisha person. asked, how much would you sell that for? This? Yeah. I would sell this one for 60 This would sell for 60 Yeah. Because I'm not putting lights in it. <laughs> this one I would not put lights in. I already did all this stuff. Carol asked, do you sell a kit? <laughs> do I sell a kit? I was selling kits. I'm going to start looking into some of the wholesale markets and see what my prices would be if I use my federal tax ID number and see. Right now, I think when you use a wholesalers, sometimes I think there's a delay in shipping and I always want to make sure that if you guys order something, I can get it to you in the same week. That's just me. If I'm ordering something, I want it as soon as I can get it. So I will be looking into that. Um, Cheryl asks, is, it, is this method too thick for in-between screen doors? Um, it's close. Maybe with the ribbon, or maybe with the bow it might be. Maybe, yeah, with the bow, definitely. Let me look. Usually just a standard referral technique is the thinnest. I'm looking for my tape measure. There it is. Uh, yes, once she puts all those little scatters and fillers in, she will go back and glue them each yeah. on the um, pipe cleaner. So, this is right about five and a half inches. So you need it at four inches to fit in between a storm door and a front door. So no, this would not fit inside a storm door. But you could put it over your mantle or over a kitchen window or wherever else you put your fall decor. We put ours over our mantle, so it looks pretty cool that way. And then we get to enjoy it. If we put it on the front door, we never even go on the front door. We all go through the garage door. So. Carol, yes, she makes uh, these wreaths. This, this one's actually available. These will be available on her Etsy shop. Yeah, I just got to finish putting all my little ball ball things on it. And then the other one, I haven't put it on there yet. Valerie says she needs one to go between her storm door and her regular door. So. Probably the regular ruffle method, huh? Yeah, ruffle method would definitely take it down. This is just... Like I said, you're you're poofing and you're you're stacking all of your deco mesh up as you go all the way around. 
So it would smush, and then um, you could always move your balls down, but your bow would be flat, <laughs> like really flat. So you guys ready to start the bow dapper one? That one we can do really quick. Yep. Okay. Cheryl, so yes, the ruffle method would be the better for a storm door because it's probably the thinnest out of all of them. That's what I would tell people. It's like, not as thick. And that, uh, yeah, people are even doing like burlap. The burlap grease are very thin because the pull through method is very minimal. So yep. that is definitely an option you have too. Okay. Okay, guys, so we're going to move on to the other one. So I'm just going to move that to the side. Steve's going to take that one away. And. Let's see if we can do some prettier. Not that those weren't pretty colors. Um, I can do this one pretty good. This one's much, much faster for me. That and the wires, it's just complicated. I just gotta practice more, but it was okay. I mean, I liked it. Would I do it again? I wouldn't do it if I was doing a wreath making tutorial because it would take too long. Like, just to walk you guys through that took us, what, about ooh, 45 minutes? Yeah. So now, let's do, let's mix up the colors. Let's do the colors we did earlier. We did this one. We did this one. We did this one. This one. What was the other one? Uh, orange polka dots. That's the one. And I did that twice. Okay. So these are the same colors I did on this one. So we're gonna do these exact same colors, but I'm gonna do this. This I did on the Probo, but now I'm gonna try to replicate this design using the Bodabra. So you have your Bodabra. You have the little device that you're going to um, you'll need at the very end to just compact everything in the middle. Um, as you guys can tell, these are on little springs. So as you lay your ribbon in, it's going to hold it. So there's enough tension in there to hold it. And this is the one where I like doing this because you can do the lantern swag. You can do what they call the funky bow with the bodabra. You can do a short tail on one side and the long tail on the other, it doesn't have to be perfect. So I like this one. Um, and we're gonna do polka dot first. So that's when you do polka dots. So you always have to make sure you dovetail because it just gives your customer that little extra flair. So we dovetail yeah. cut. A lot of people say they love it without a lot of ribbon tails over that pretty mesh. I don't, oh. Uh, that's just my personal preference. I don't like to cover up my decor much. This is too pretty. Yeah. If you're going to spend the money on this, I mean, this stuff is like $12 a roll with all the pretty colors in it. Why would you cover it up? Claudia asks, well, Claudia asks on the bubble, could you make an 8-inch poof for the bubble technique to go between the doors? You could. It would probably make it a little bit thinner, but mm, I will have, have to, to try just it. try it. Yeah. I'd have to try it. I will try it, and then I'll let you know if I can get it smaller. Because I have a... 10 inch wreath frame so i can try to do that with a smaller i would probably do maybe a 10 inch deco mesh so starting with our tail it's up to you here's how you decide where you're going to do your tails so let's do this one at seven inches that's a good tail length so you're just going to stick it in here but before you stick it in here you're going to do the twist so we don't have wire on this one. So it's just gonna slide straight into our bow dabra. So here's our pretty side facing up. And then we have the wrong side fabric this way. So this is kind of like what we're doing, but we don't have fingers. So we just kind of calculate how big of a loop you want. So we're making our loops. So we just twist and put it inside. And then this, one, two, three, four. It's about a four inch loop. So again, I've completed it and I have my wrong side fabric out. Here's how we make our loop. So you just twist, put it back in the Bodabra. And then you can just make sure that you have the same size loop. One, two, three, almost a little bit. So here's where you can make it perfect and just pull it through. So 
that is our first section of our bow. So we have, we want seven inches, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna cut it here. I like using my bow dabber for doing lantern swag and just stuff where you want short tails on one side, long tails on the other. And we're just gonna flip this one. So there's that one. So I'm gonna keep this out because I do add that back into the mix. And so now I'm doing my, kind of look at how I stack this. So that one, pumpkin, green, this, okay. So we'll do green. Yeah, um, Janie said so many wreathers cover all the mesh with ribbon tails, it's a shame. Some, I don't know. I guess some people like that look. Yeah. But if you're gonna if you're gonna spend the money in high quality deco mesh, I wouldn't cover it up. So because we have tail over here, we're gonna start tail on this side. So again, twist. You can decide if you want smaller. You can decide if you want longer. I think I'm gonna go just a touch longer. Jane, uh, yes, <clears throat> she did the bubble wreath on both of those on the 14 inch form. Again. If you want your loops to be the same size, then you can use your bottom one to just be the gauge of that one. So that's what I'm going to do. Twist, put it back in, make sure those are the same. And because I'm back over here again, here's my tail. And I'm just gonna finish this one, like so. Dovetail my ends because it just makes your finished product look so much nicer. Just like so. Hi Belinda, you got on late, late, so yeah, you'll definitely have to watch the replay. So now I'm gonna come in with the two and a half inch. We'll dovetail this one. So we're gonna go. This one you can pick and choose however you wanna stack them. I'm gonna do this one a little bit longer. Just like that. Make your loops. Twist so your wrong side fabric is facing up. I'm gonna keep my loops pretty consistent. Fabric's upside down already, so you just twist. Obviously this one's way bigger, so I can pull it through to keep it the length I need. And then there's the end. Cut it. The Bodabra works really good for all those leftover little pieces of <laughs> ribbon you have that don't necessarily go anywhere. You can start with a really short piece and then have a long piece and then have a long piece here, a short piece there, and make a funky bow uh, and just intermix all those ribbon pieces. Yeah, there's a lot of people saying that they, they agree that um, <clears throat> when no you make reads, yeah, everybody <laughs> covers all the deco mesh with all sorts of tails and ribbon. Yeah. It's good to have some showing. Well, like I said, if you're going to spend the money to put really nice fabric, why cover it up? Yeah, Kathy and Donna were saying that, as well as Jeannie and Jane. So I'm letting this one come out this side. This is my pumpkin mm -hmm. ribbon, so this is one and a half inches. So we're going to pull this out. Keep all my loops pretty much the same. Twisting puts the wrong side fabric already on the other side for me. Mary Jane said, hello, I've been wanting to learn a bow with a bow dabra, thanks. Hello, the bow dabra. She shared, thanks for sharing everybody. It'd be awesome if you guys could share, appreciate it. It's funny, this ribbon to me looks like it's tomato. I don't know why, the orange I think on the pumpkin with the glitter, this looks like a tomato. So dovetail cut your ends. Karen asked, where's the green ribbon from? Craft outlet, craft outlet, craft outlet. The, all of them are from Craft Outlet except this one that we're using. So all of these colors came from Craft Outlet. And the, that one was from Hobby Lobby. Which one? The orange with the leaves. Yeah, this is all coming back. So this is 30 feet at Hobby Lobby. You'll have to use your coupon mm -hmm. until it gets closer to fall. But if you wait that long, they'll all be picked out. So start picking it up now in little quantities. So I'm just kind of picking and choosing. See, this is where you can go really long with one. I think I'll go long with this one. 
and I gotta get my right side, wrong side up, and it turns into right side. Flipping. Since we're only doing two loop bows, this is actually pretty easy. Berlin asked, have you ever used a zip tie to, to secure your bow together instead of wire? Uh, no. I guess I could. It's just, I usually use the um, pipe cleaner. Just if I have to change it, I can always pull my pipe cleaner out and start the whole process all over again. And then we're doing, I think I'm going to do green on top. So I did all five colors. I think I'm going to finish off with green this time. I like the green. Sam said that pumpkin ribbon is so pretty. Isn't it? Look, I even have it in two and a half inch. So they have it in one and two and a half inch. They just don't look good together. And then here's another one from Craft Outlet. So they have just regular pumpkin. So I don't know. I wanted sparkle. So this mm -hmm. one's almost done. So I'm just going to add another one. Mary said, thank you. This is an excellent video. I'm hoping you guys get a good view. Do you give guys her, like this view? Give her all loves and likes. So, yeah, I've got it zoomed in too, so you should be able to see it pretty good. I'm actually going to make this one pretty short. So I'm just going to change my length on my bow. There you go. Loop, twist, push it in. Just measure it. So, Because you don't want your top bow <laughs> to be longer than your other ones. So you want to kind of put it through. Susan said, sometimes the points of my dovetails curl. Why? Too deep a cut? Uh, no, it's probably just the tensile strength on your, because um, mine did it too. Like if you're using like a canvas ribbon, they'll kind of curl at the ends, but you have wire in them, so just play with them. It just depends on the tensile strength of that wired ribbon. Inside. If it's a thick tensile strength, then it won't really curl, but if it's a thinner one, it definitely will probably. If it curls, because it's got the wire in it, like these ones, they could curl. You just... I think she means curl in. You know how sometimes they curl in? Like this? Yeah. Oh, you, again, you can still sit there. Yeah. Because ribbons are so nice, you can sit here and just play with them. You can get them to, to put that arc back in them if you want, just by running your fingers through them. Mm -hmm. So here's my last one. So this is where you take your little bar and it's going to go in between these little pieces here and it's going to smush everything together. So remember how on the Probo I was taking it and kind of squishing it to the okay. peg? This kind of does that for me. So it's all in there. So now I'm going to use orange. So you could do it one of two ways. Because this is the top of my bow looking down, if I was to put this in underneath, like between these two and start at the bottom, when I go to lift it up, I'm going to have these at the top. And I actually want it to be like this pointing down so that when I go to twist it, this will allow me to actually fasten it to the wreath. So I'm just going to pick the whole thing up and hold it in my hand. Just kind of shake it. So there's your pinch. So you just take your pipe cleaner. And you're just going to take it. And you're going to twist it. Put a couple twists. And then this is where you take this. And you can twist it the rest of the way. So it kind of looks like our Terry bow, but it's just stacked Different. differently. So let us... Can we take that bow off and let's just use this as my fluff box? Because I know we're going to put that bow back on. I need a device to fluff my bows so you can actually see what it looks. So this is where you can just take your, your ribbon tails and if you just run your hands through them, you put that natural loop back in them. You'll get glitter everywhere. But welcome to fall. This is what's going to happen into your house everywhere. You will have glitter on everything. <laughs> in all your kitchen counter cracks, crevices, whatever. So here's where we're going to attach it. So I just had Steve take, it, take the other bow off. So I'm just going to feed this one down. 
so that we can fluff it on a wreath because that's generally where I like to fluff my bows is on the wreath and not on a box so that I can pick it up and re-fluff it again. So I will put it where I need it to go. Nancy said, this is just great. I so enjoyed watching on how to make a bow. Thank you. You're welcome. So here you can do the same thing. Like Brenda's saying, if you want all of your, um, because this is actually tight and pretty good, you can fidge and pull and fluff and pull everything in the direction you want it to go. If you want your tails to go in a totally different direction, you can. Brenda asked if you did shorter loops on the last green ribbon. I yes, I did. Time. They were right up here. I certainly did, because I wanted, as this was my last one, I wanted my loops a little shorter. Yep. Just like so. This is where you can get funky with your ribbons mm -hmm. and have really long tails have some pretty short. Hi Ginger, she said hello from New Orleans. So happy wow. to see you live. Thank you. Hi Ginger, thanks for joining. Brenda said love it. Uh, Carol, yes, she does take special orders. You just need to message her. Mm -hmm. You can just tell me whatever it is you want. So this is where we just take our bows and we just sit here and you can play. Um, the one thing I really enjoy about doing with the pro bow is um, can you grab the lantern swag that's over there on the mantle? I'll show you what we can do with the lantern swags. You can do what's called a funky bow, and most people can do those by hand. I cannot. I have not mastered by my hands yet. But you can have tails that go really, really long. Let me show what this looks like when it's actually where it's supposed to be. Let me move this over here. And pull some of these around. Yeah, I wanted the very, very top bows to be a little bit shorter. Or the tails on my top bow to be a little shorter. Okay. So, just like so. I'm always about making sure my bows don't have creases. I think that's my biggest pet peeve. Good job, everybody. She said, I struggle with ribbons and have a tendency to leave them off. With this video, I'm going to practice more. Just seriously, keep practicing, practicing, practicing. You know, if you don't like the way, see how this one's folding? Yeah. It's just the tinsel strength in the ribbon. <clears throat> so just keep fidgeting with it. Roll it. If you wanted these cut shorter, you could cut them shorter. I like them to kind of spray. So you could do one short, leave one really long. On my Christmas ribbons, I like my ribbons to be pretty long and then spiral all the way to the bottom. So this one's actually a little too long for me. Why'd you pull it off? You said you wanted it off, didn't you? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, I just wanted to show them the, the bow method where we did long versus short. So this is where if you don't like your ribbon lengths, you can play with them a little bit. Cut the ones you want that maybe hang a little too low, like this one. It just gets in the way of my sign. Okay. We will recut that again. I do not get a smooth thing. You can just leave it on there, babe. Okay. There we go. Teresa said, I love this demo on the Bodabra. And Ginger, she, yeah, she'll, she'll also post these to her YouTube page. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing. It's uh, www.youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Cats Creation 777. Oops. This one's folded. Picky. Picky, picky, picky. There we go. So that's the way this one looks when we add it to here. So this is done with the Bodabra. The other one was done with the, um, what do I call it? 
This one Provo. was done with the Provo. So if you look, you can just kind of pick and choose which one you wanted. And so this one I just did bigger loops. This one I had control of the loop size that I wanted so I could pick and choose big, small, long tail, short tail. So those are the options you have. And then, like Steve was saying, when you have the Pro Bow, you can do it's called Funky Bows, which means that you can have a long tail here and then you can just kind of curl them. You can have a short tail. You can have another short tail, long tail. This you can do on the Bodabra. I haven't been able to figure out a way to master this on the Provo. I have to keep thinking about those names. So you can take all of your ribbons, you can make them curl, you can make them spiral any way you want. I like it because I like to be able to play with different textures, different lengths. So, and that is just as you're laying them in here, like this, you would take this, you twist it. Now let's say, for example, you just do a two loop bow really quick, like this. And then you just want to leave the end short on this side, but really long on the other side. You can do that. You can do you know, really super long ones on the other and then just do two simple short bows. So you can cut your tails wherever you want. If you don't like the way it looks, you just take it all out and then just start all over again. You know, you're like, oh, that was too long. I don't want to make those that long. So that's what's nice about this is you can just sit here every time you twist and push them in. See here, you can obviously tell this one's smaller, this is way longer, so you just pull it until they're the same size. Or you can be precise and measure them. And then, oh, I want long on this side. Way long. Way, way, way long. <laughs> it's entirely up to you. Mm -hmm. And then you can just keep stacking other colors that you like. That's what I did on this one. I just picked red, white, and blue, then I did the canvas, then I did the red, white, and blue stars, then I went back and did the canvas, red, white, and blue, and then stars. And I just kept doing this through here all the way through. And then you would just roll or you could spiral your ribbon tails if you want. So Carolyn, just... Carolyn brought up a point and you can talk to that point here in a second. She said, you forgot to put something under the bodabra such as a uh, wires or a pipe cleaner oh you can and that's why i was saying like when see here's how you do your spirals you just wrap them around your finger and you just spiral them down mm -hmm. and you can have them spiral in your your thing so if you wanted to you can take it you can start it this way but just remember when you go to pull this up you want to start with your Front. You're up. The front of the bow. Yeah, the front of the bow. So the very center is down here, and then this is your end. So then when you pull it up, all you have to do is just twist it, and you're all done. But I just do it this way yeah. and pull it up. That way I can adjust as I go and stack accordingly. Diane, I want to say this is awesome. I haven't been able to make a nice bow with the bow dabber. Thank you for sharing. Just play talent. with it. James, I, mean, I love your lantern topper. <laughs> oh, the lantern swag? Yeah, we're going to be changing yeah. that out. So, we're going to be doing that in the private group. We'll be doing lantern swag for Halloween. We'll be doing lantern swag for uh, fall. Um, we'll have to do some, probably some creepy ones. Some some ones that like Caitlin and Kaylee would like. Our, our teens are more into the, yeah, the ghouls and the, goal, the gore stuff. Um. Jan asked, where do you buy the Bodabra? Uh, Bodabra. So mm -hmm. this, you can pretty much get it anywhere. Um, I got mine at Hobby Lobby because it was $15.99, but then I can use my 40% off coupon. So that makes it really affordable. You can buy them at Walmart, I think. I forget what price Walmart has, but with the 40% off coupon at Hobby Lobby, you can't beat the price. You can order them online. I think Amazon carries them, but you have to watch out because there is a mini Bodabra, and that's to make little girls' hair bows. 
So that's what you would use like the half inch or seven eighth inch ribbon to make. Are you playing with the bow? I'm taking this one back out so you're going to put the other one back. Yeah, on. I will. Um, so that's that. The Pro Bow you can get online. I think it's about $39.99. It comes with the, the board and it comes with the ribbon holder. But if you're like me, I just prefer to just have my ribbon out. I don't like it to get all messed up. So um, that's where we're at. So what do you guys think? What do you guys like? Um, Did we do Charlotte, a good job? Charlotte asks, so Kat, should I get the Pro Bow and the Bow Debra? Uh, Charlotte Ryder? Yeah. Um, you can. Like, it just depends on what you want to use it for. I mean, they're both going to make great bows, but I think you have a lot more flexibility with the Bow Debra. Plus, the Bow Debra, you can use it to hold your curls. Can't do that with a Pro Bow. Yeah. Um, it'll hold your curls while you're, you're doing the curl method on your wreath. I'm just twisting this back on my wreath. Because um, you can take your deco mesh ribbon when you're doing your curls. You're rolling your curls, and some people do the um, clothespins or the clips. You can just load them in, in here, just right down the middle, and just use this as a holder. Shirley asked in private group, are you going to show how to make the swag for the lantern? Oh, yeah. The, the lantern swag for the Patriotic is already in there. Is so that in the, your private group? Yeah. yeah, it's in the private group video. It's in the library. Um, and then we're going to be doing one for Halloween and then because we were looking for a black lantern yesterday But all their black lanterns were just Not very good. So we want a black one for Halloween obviously and then we'll do that for Fall and then we'll, we'll change them out for Christmas. We'll make them seasonal so we can show you if you have these lanterns Some people say they have them on either side of their mantle. Some people say they put them on the center of their mantle um the lantern swags can also be used on your porch sconces. So if you have really nice lanterns on your porches or on either side of your garage, you can use your lantern swags for that. Yep. So you can make your house look really amazing this year. Yep. A lot of these little bulbs are called um, scatters and fillers. They call them something differently now. Vase fillers. Vase fillers. You can yeah. get them at Hobby Lobby. And yes, once you put them on and determine where you want them, you go back in and glue them on the on the ends of the pipe cleaner. You have to actually put the hole in first. Yeah. So when you push them on there, they go on real easy. And then you can't see it, but there's the hole. So you put a dab of glue, and then you would just pop that back on. Yep. So you have to put them on to make the hole, and then you can decide if you like that placement or those colors aren't exactly you know, that good. They make them in all colors, so at Christmas time they'll have greens. Um, I think at Halloween they have purples. So it's entirely up to you what you want to do. So yep. what do you guys think? Do you guys? Awesome. There are a lot of people are saying love it. Thank you for the um, tutorial. And a lot of them are telling them, you know, which they want, they like the kind of the most and which one gives them mm -hmm. problems. It's entirely <laughs> up to you. And like I said, don't <clears throat> be afraid of um, experimenting with the bows. You know, if you don't like the, like, even if you don't like this entire layout, mm -hmm. all it is is wired together. So just untwist it, unwire it, and then just rewire it up again. Maybe you don't like the way that you stack certain colors. Just restack them a different way. Good question, Cheryl. She said, so you sell the lantern swags without the lantern? Yes, because the lanterns will not ship. And we all know what those postal boxes look like. So if you're selling lantern swag, my recommendation, even if you're doing centerpieces, I don't ship the, the centerpieces. I'll show you how to make them. And I sell them local, but I don't ship them because the way that they look like here will undoubtedly not look the way that it, it, it will when you get it to your house. It'll look mm, probably pretty damaged because I've seen what some of my shipping boxes look like. Thankfully, our wreaths are generally not damageable, which is why we don't use glass bulbs. We use um, the ones that look like glass. They call them shatterproof. So we use those when we ship. Because, you know, you don't want a poor customer to get a wreath and your bulbs are all shattered. So you're back in view now. Oh, I'm back in view. <laughs> Hi. I'm just sitting here adding these, so 
I can take my pictures and get those posted <laughs> yep. and get that all listed. But yeah, what do you guys think? Which which do you guys prefer? Out of this method, which are you most likely to try? Everybody's saying different. There's some people saying the like the Bodabra, mm -hmm. and some people saying that um, they use the Provo mm -hmm. and they like to use the Provo. So uh -huh. it just depends on their comfort. See, and it's just a preference, right? right? There is no right and wrong way. It's good to eventually, when you can afford it, that was it. I mean, I started with the Bodabra because I was on a, um, you know, moving into Christmas or saving your money for Christmas. We were financing a wedding. All I could afford was that at 40% off. So I think it was like maybe seven something, something like that, closer to eight. So it was affordable for me and it got me through my bow making. And somebody asked you how to join your private group. Uh, on the Cats Creation page, when we end this video, at the very, very top of the page, there's a video posted that says how to join my private group. So if you join before the end of, Ju the end of June, it's um, $10 a month, and then in July it'll go up to $17, but if you're in before July 1st, you get to stay on the $10 rate for as long as you continue to be a member. Which is a great deal because some people sell their the tutorials. tutorials for $10 each. Yeah. So. so we'll be doing a lot of stuff. I will show you whatever I am legally allowed to sell or mm -hmm. show. Which means that if I've watched this tutorial that I've paid for and I've reached out to that vendor to ask if I can teach it and they say no, I will show you that I have made it and Steve and I are going to try to figure out a way that can we make this? Can we, it. Yeah, can we recreate it using some other crazy technique and then we can teach it. So it's just a work in progress. Janet asked, what would you charge if you were just selling the bows each? Uh, I question. would easily charge for like the ones we made tonight anywhere between 8 and 15 because as you guys know ribbon is expensive and it doesn't matter if you get it on at Hobby Lobby when it's half off I mean your ribbon roll is still $10 I mean some of them are $15 it just depends on what your pattern is and what your preference is they get expensive and yeah we're not using a whole roll but we're using an awful lot of material to make one. So if a customer had to recreate this bow, they'd have to purchase every single roll here. Shelly asked, do you have something that shows when you are live? I don't have ManyChat installed, and that's what a lot of people say. They'll, they'll comment live, they'll comment alert. To me, it's just like a pop-up that shows up in your instant messenger like a text. I don't like it. I don't like being messaged that way, so I'm just not using it. But there is a notification available in Facebook to where if you like and then click the follow button, even though it'll automatically default to follow on this page, if you open it, it will say um, default and then it'll say see first. And then there's a little drop down box that says notifications. And if you open that box, it says notify me when this page goes live. So turn that notification on. But Facebook's always changing, so what I tell you today could be different by Friday. <laughs> so we just roll with it all the time, right? Yep. And no buffering issues tonight, right? No, I don't think it has buffering. That's so amazing. Right? We never think... have that. So thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Wow. Hi, that's a, she said, love your instructions, and I'm a 40-year-old retired high school teacher. Thank you. Awesome. Well, hopefully you're going to be a 40-year-old high school teacher that's going to be making some awesome Christmas gifts this year. Yeah. Because, I mean, your packages are going to look amazing. And trust me, once you start making these all the time, by the time you get to your own Christmas tree and your own mantle and your own lantern swag, you're going to, like, pull out all the stops that you've learned along the way. And you're going to have a really incredible house. So I can't wait to see what you guys are going to create during Christmas. So any other questions you guys have before I let you leave into the start of a work week? I might have missed it very early on, but there was a woman who said that she messaged you about joining the private group. Okay. If you send me a message, obviously I can't reply to that message right now, but I will definitely get back with you and let you know. Send her another message, yeah. Um, yeah, if you've already sent one to me, sometimes they kind of have a tendency of getting buried, so just message me again. And that's pretty much about it, right? That's about it. 
So as you guys can see, I'm still sitting here. Valerie said, yeah, I get notified being in both. Okay. See? It just depends how you have selected to choose your notification methods. So, yeah, we're all good. So if you guys like these, they're on, they will be on my page as soon as I take pictures of them. And thank you, Donna and Kathy. They said it's the best inv investment joining your group. I know, because I was like, you guys don't want to know how much I paid for some tutorials. I'm like, Lord, help me. I mean, just that initial investment pays for the whole thing for the whole month. And I will be posting the July schedule. When is today? Today's the 24th? Mm -hmm. I'll be posting it on Friday. So last minute people that are sitting on the fence, not really sure, I'm going to show you what all is coming up in July. So that's what the private group has. Public group will always decide because I usually give you a choice of one or two things for what we want to see or what you guys want to see me create on Fridays. So that won't change. So you guys can just tell me. But it's going to be fall, Halloween, Christmas. Fall, Halloween, Christmas. Even though July is just here. So we're really not going to yeah. do much back to school stuff. So last question. Um, Linda said, do you only teach the bows for lanterns in the private class? Uh, bows for the lanterns. Like, I could the teach you a swags. funky bow. Uh, lantern squads are going to stay in, in the, the, private. the private group. Yeah. yeah. But you can watch all the videos. So everything that's in my private group from February till now, you have access to. Once you're in. Yeah. Once you're in, you can watch it as many times as you want. You just can't share it outside the group. But you watch as many times as you want. So my group will tell you. Thank God for that. So, all right, guys. Well, have a great weekend. Have a good start to your work week. Um, and we will see my public group on Friday at 5. At 5. Have a great start of your work week. Good night, everybody.